All right, hello everybody, and welcome to this Unity Retro 2D platformer tutorial series. My name is Ben, and today we are going to make this very scene that you're watching right now, starring yours truly, Waluigi. So, let's fire up Unity, and let's go. Okay, so, you've just opened up Unity, and you should be met with a menu that looks like this. This is our project's menu. Yours is empty right now, so let's change that by creating a new project by going over here to new. Click that, and it will bring you to this. So, name your project, guys. You can name it whatever you like. Leave your location as it is, that's fine. And here's what's most important. As we're making a 2D game, we need to preset the Unity editor to 2D saves us a lot of work in making the adjustments ourselves. Once you've done that, just simply create project. Okay, once you're in Unity, you should be welcomed with a screen that looks like this. Don't be intimidated by all these menus and options you see on the screen. We're gonna go through them on a need to know as we go basis. So for now, I would like us to customize this layout as I'm not a big fan of the default layout. So I'd like you to go up to here, top right, and select layout and two by three. This menu layout is a lot cleaner, I feel. I would also like us to just move the project menu by selecting it, holding down, and dragging it to there. That looks better. And we can slide these along as well, because I like to work with a little bit of space here in our scene menu. And this here is our game menu. This is how our game is going to look. So let's get right into it and prepare our project before we begin. This is our project folder. In here are going to be the folders where we're gonna store a lot of our game assets. We already have one folder called scenes. We're gonna create a few more. So right click inside the assets menu, folder, and let's call this one scripts. This is where we're gonna store our code. With scripts highlighted, I want you to press Control and D to duplicate. And I want you to duplicate three more folders. And we're going to rename those by simply highlighting and click once to change the name. This one will be materials. This one will be sprites. And this one will be prefabs. At the moment, we can't see all our folders in there, but we can change it by moving this slider here so we can see our folders. There we go. All right, let's get into it. Let's import our first assets. Before we do, though, it's best that we save our scene. Go to File, Save As, double-click Scenes, and let's save it as Level 1. There we go. And we can open our scenes folder now, either from here or in here. And there we go, level one. Hopefully you have all come prepared and downloaded the sprite sheets that I had available for you because we are now going to import those into our sprites folder. So open it up. As you can see, it's empty. Like we did before, right click, Import new asset. Find your sprite sheets, highlight them both, and import. Ta da! There we go. They are now in our assets folder, ready to go. Now, with our sprite sheet here highlighted, I'd like you to have a look here at the inspector. Now, the inspector shows all the information 
about our assets or game objects. And I want you to have a look at this, pixels per unit. Now a unit represents one of these squares inside our scene view. At the moment, each square is 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So that's 100 pixels across by 100 pixels down. Our sprites are 64 pixels by 64 pixels. So we have to change that. So I'd like you to go ahead and change this to 64. And we also want to cut up our sprites individually. So let's change sprite mode from single to multiple. And once you've done that, you can hit apply and go to sprite editor here. There we go. It brings up all three of our sprites, our block, our spikes and our flag. We need to cut these up now individually. So I'd like you to go to slice and it may already be on automatic or not, but if it is, don't worry, we're going to change it to grid by cell size. And as we know, our cell size, our sprite cell size is 64 by 64. So I'd like to put 64 by 64 in the X and the Y value. Pivot, we can have it center. And once you've done that, select slice. Go in here, select the block, and as you can see, the block is now highlighted on its own, along with spikes and the flag. Let's name them so they're easier to identify in our assets folders. Let's call this one block spikes and goal pole. Once you've done that, hit apply, exit, go back into our sprites folder here in the assets folder, click this little arrow and there you go. Each of these now are an individual sprite. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and repeat that with our character sprite sheet. Select the character sprite sheet, pixels per unit are how many? That's right, 64, sprite mode, multiple, hit apply, open up the sprite editor, and there we go. There's our character sprite sheet. Let's slice it up into five individual sprites. Go to slice, grid by cell size, 64 by 64, pivot, we can leave it there at center, and slice. There we go, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go ahead and name these now. This one we can call idle. This one, jump. These three are gonna be for our run or walk animation. So we can call this one, step. This one we can call contact. And this one can be push. There we go. Hit apply, and let's check them out. There we go, all our sprites are ready for action. Before we move on, let's crack a save. Always remember to save often. You don't wanna lose a lot of changes you've made, believe me. So let's now start building our level. Let's start shaping things out. Let's go to our block here and let's drag it all the way up to our hierarchy or into our scene view. Our hierarchy is going to be a list of all our game objects that are in our scene. If I drag it here, there we go. The block has now been added into our hierarchy window. It's where we last left it. We clicked and we dragged and it's now here. We want it to be center as it's going to be easier to work with. To do that, to reset its position, go to the cog here and click reset. Boom, there we go. This is going to make it easier for us to, to work with this block 
as it's now snapped to our grid at the center. If you select this red arrow, make sure this is highlighted, this is our move, move tool. Select the red arrow and click it and drag. You're gonna move the block along the X axis, that's our left and our right. Control Z to bring it back to the center. If you select this greenish, yellowish arrow, that's our Y axis, that's gonna move our block, our game object, up or down. If you select the tiny blue square in between the two, that's our free move. We can move that around any way we want. The other game object in our hierarchy is our camera. Our camera is shown here. This is our game view. This is how the game is going to look. At the minute, it's very narrow, and we want to change that. And we can simply do that by going here to this drop down menu where it says free aspect. Deselect low resolution aspect ratios. And let's go with an aspect ratio of 16, 9. It's a cut for one to work with. And drag the scale to one. We'll also want to zoom out so we can see our camera's borders in our scene view. We can see the sides, but we cannot see the top or the bottom. So to zoom out, hold down control and scroll with your mouse wheel. There we are. To move this around, we can push in our middle mouse button or scroll button, and we can drag our scene view around. You can do so by selecting up here as well. If you right click, you can also do the same. And left click selects and deselects. With our block now sitting there in the middle of our scene view, we can now start building as that is where we build. We build in the scene view. So what are we gonna build? We're gonna keep it very simple, very sweet. We're gonna create a ground, a ceiling, and two walls, which will be the confines of our level. So let's start with ground, shall we? We have two game objects in our hierarchy window. I want you to select the block and like we did before with the folders, hold Control and D to duplicate. Then with this new block selected, hold down Control as we move it along the X axis and it snaps. Let's snap our new block right next to our old one. We could do that again for each and every block we want to duplicate, but to speed things up, if we hold down control, we can select the other block in our hierarchy and duplicate again, control D, there we go. We duplicated those two blocks. Drag those over and we can do the same again. This time, highlight the first block, hold down shift, and it highlights all the blocks between the first and the last. Duplicate, drag them over, there we are. Uh, we could probably fit two or three more there, but we can just duplicate those four again and drag them over. Okay, that's one half of our ground. What about the other half? Rather than select every single one of these and drag them around all the way across, we're gonna make it a bit more manageable as we're gonna have 24 game objects otherwise, all taking up space in our hierarchy. I want you to right click inside the hierarchy and create an empty game object. There we go. This game object needs to have its position reset. There we are. Now it's got nothing inside of it. It's completely blank, invisible. So let's name this game object as our ground. Okay. Now we can move this around, but as I said before, there's nothing in there. Let's take all 12 of these blocks Hold, highlight the first one, hold down shift, 
select them all and drag them into ground. Much like we did before with the files, these are essentially the same thing. We have now grouped all these inside essentially a folder called ground, our parent game object. All our blocks have now become child game objects of ground. So if I close that, boom, there we go. It keeps objects together and also it means our hierarchy is going to stay clean, tidy and manageable. So let's go ahead and select all 12 again, duplicate to complete the second half. Close it down and there we go. If we select ground now, we control all the objects inside, all the child objects of the parent. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to the ground. There we go. That's our ground. To make the ceiling, all we're going to do is duplicate the ground, rename it, either by clicking once or you can rename it here in the inspector. We'll call this one ceiling. Select it. Oh, select it and drag it up. Holding down shift to get a nice clean snap. And there we go. There's our ceiling. Now let's make the walls. To do that, let's just grab our block again. Let's grab a new block, drag it in the hierarchy. Its position is already centered, so that's okay. And let's do the same again. But this time, we're going to create a game object. And we're going to call it left wall. And let's just drag this block inside there. And now we can go ahead and duplicate. Let's do it again. And I'm just going to duplicate that last one. There we go. And let's duplicate these four. And drag them down. There we go. That's our left wall. Let's bring it, snap it over to the left, and to make the right wall, you can right click to duplicate, or control D, and snap it across. There we go. Don't forget to rename it, right wall. All right, so that's looking pretty good. It fits the borders of our camera, but there's one thing missing. And that's our player character. Where's Wario? Let's go and add him in to round up this video. Let's scroll up to our sprites, our Wario sprites. And let's select idle and just drag it in the hierarchy. There we go. He's already centered, ready and waiting for video two. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and are enjoying learning how to use Unity. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to look at collisions and moving this character using physics. Take care guys and I'll see you soon.